Hey, Bart here with Cycling Strong. So we've got a whole bunch of videos to watch, a series that we're putting together. I'm here with Dave, Plan 7 Coaching, or Plan 7 Endurance Coaching, uh, and want to ask a few questions. So if you haven't checked the whole series out, go do that. There's so much great, great information for you. So my question is, uh, this is my, so this would be my actual fourth year really racing, so that all of you know where I'm, where I'm coming from with this question. So fourth year really wait, racing, uh, last year did Leadville. I'm doing Leadville again this year. Dave's going to help me crush Leadville. Uh, I actually just threw in a lottery for another big race in our area. We'll see if I get into it. And we'll kind of plan that one at the same time if I do. But this is the thing that I, have a, I struggle with. So that's why I'm going to ask the question is race tactics. Now, race tactics for me, I watch the Tour, right? I, I mean, who doesn't watch the Tour de France, right? So I watch the Tour de France. I watch the Tour of Utah, I watch some of the stuff, and I sit sometimes and I go, what the heck are they thinking? <laughs> they know they're gonna get caught by the Peloton, it's all, <laughs> you know. So I wanted to ask just a little bit of basic race strategy. Obviously, this could be a segment that could take days. shit days, yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously. And, and I've looked for material, and you get tidbits, but not a lot. So. I mean, don't get into a huge, obviously, but help us with a little bit of race strategy and what you help your clients with. Sure. So what you're seeing in Tour de France, Tour of Utah, mm -hmm. the big races with the big teams, yeah. they have a lot of horsepower. Right. And they know nearly to a science what they can put out for how long, right. uh, at what day in the yeah. tour. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of money involved, so there's a lot of analysis sure. on the back end. Sure. And, and you mean as a coach, you're not doing all that for me at the same time? <laughs> yeah, oh, of course. <laughs> good, good. I thought uh, you were. <laughs> and so, you know, what, what's going on there is you're seeing someone who is hired for a job. Right. And they know their job. Yeah. And they want a contract next year. Yeah. And so when it's time, when they, when they hear on the radio attack, mm -hmm. they attack. Right. And they attack hard. And... You know, sometimes they know that it's a futile attempt, yeah. and they're going to get caught with 2K to go, yeah. and, they, and they will wonder if they're going to be able to pedal the next day. Yeah. And I say that sometimes it's a marketing attempt because they want their brand and they want their logo yeah. on camera for X amount of time. And I mean, I laugh about that, but I honestly, sometimes I really it's, feel like that's what it is sometimes. It's true. It's true. They want exposure. So you'll see a lot of the smaller teams yeah. at the big races really be aggressive. Yeah. And in Europe, you know, a five hour stage on Tour de France, yeah. we see what, two oh, to exactly. two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, there, they see it from start to finish. Right. And so those early breakaways are worth a lot of money to yeah. the sponsors. Right. Because they're getting that TV exposure. You and bet. why else do sponsors <laughs> plug in <laughs> big right. dollars? They, exactly. they want some type of Pretty exposure. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, you know that that can be part of it, but the overall tactic is in a in a grand tour or a or a multi day tour. Mm -hmm. You want you you might have an idea of who your best general classification rider is. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to have that person expend the least amount of energy possible. Mm -hmm. So having your team represented in a breakaway mm -hmm. when other teams don't means that they are going to have to do the majority of the work unless unless they kind of gamble and wonder if those guys are going to blow up right or maybe they get too far out and it puts that lead in danger and they right. don't feel like their teammate up the road can can survive the rest of the race right so at some point you may see a team chasing down a breakaway with right. a teammate right it's because it's a calculated uh thing over many days in a one-day race you're probably not going to see that unless your guy up the road calls back on the radio and says, I am shattered and in trouble, yeah. or I just got dropped. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes when you see those kind of tactics executed, you might be, oh, they suck as a team. They right. don't know what they're doing. Right. They're chasing down their guy. Yeah. No, there's, there's a bigger plan involved. Gotcha. Um, in amateur racing, you don't always see um, that much cooperation amongst teammates, there are situations where, yeah, an, a, a team decides, hey, we are in it for the team, yeah. and we want to see a team result. Yeah. And that can be a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what excites me about continuing racing is, you know, getting the right group of guys who mm -hmm. have that kind of motivation. Mm -hmm. And it is a blast when, you know, and that even, is a discipline, you guys. I mean, what he's talking about here, egos get checked at the door. This is, I mean, it's yeah. a different type of racing than... Yeah, you have to commit to the goal of the team. Right. And be happy, like if you win, yeah. your teammate is just as happy about right. your win as you are. Absolutely. And, and they feel it and they, they, they feel like they helped. They feel yeah. somewhat responsible for yeah. it. Um, and, Which and, honestly, and if executed right, they should. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's tactics within a team situation. Right. But most of now us are Now you've got doing tactics, <laughs> you know, you may show up to a race and you might have one teammate yep. out of 50 guys. Right. Not a lot you can do coordinated as a team. But right. what you can do is not chase each other down. Yeah. Uh, you can, let's say you're, you're, a, you're a fast finisher. Yeah. And so if you're still, if both of you are still in the group mm -hmm. with a couple miles to go, mm -hmm. Your buddy comes and finds you, helps you get closer to the front to where mm. you have a better chance at a fast finish. Mm. Uh, you also want to pay attention to who are the strong riders. Right. This is the best tactic out there, is learn who the strong riders are. Mm -hmm. If you're in a race out of your area and you're not familiar, pay attention early in the race. Mm -hmm. Find out who looks strong. Find mm -hmm. out, um, you know, pay attention to how people ride early mm -hmm. and how they're riding middle of the race and mm -hmm. how they're riding close to the end. Okay. Like if their posture has changed a lot mm -hmm. and they just look like they're suffering, mm -hmm. they probably are. I yeah. mean, everybody is towards the end, but sometimes even when you're suffering, you put the hammer down, mm -hmm. that might be the end. Right. It's a gamble, but you know, tactics are always a gamble. Yeah. You never know. Uh, how other guys really are riding and you know that's that's part of the game is yep. maybe even feigning a little bit of fatigue yeah when you're when you're not fatigued or right. somehow pulling a straight face when you're blown <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah I think another thing too uh, and I've, I I mean I'm not saying this is gospel for anybody but uh, try to use as little as effort as you can during your race and I had one gentleman always tell me that they don't print anything but one two and three so uh, <laughs> yeah. so you know get your get your butt after it if you want to be at one two and three so don't worry about if people are yelling at you in the pace line or telling you're not doing things but try to be courteous I mean have etiquette in the pace line but use obviously as minimal amount of energy as you possibly can to yeah that's the name of the game get is into, the name of the game is energy conservation yeah. and using energy when it makes sense, minimizing when it doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes it makes sense to ride in the wind, yeah. uh, but not if you're giving everybody else a draft. Right. And so, you know, if, if you decide it's time to attack, don't mess around, attack. Yeah. Get after it. And if it doesn't work, Re readjust and maybe try again or realize that it's not going anywhere and yeah. conserve. Good. So another thing that I find too, and I, I had to find this out just because it's something that was interesting to me is cat five, uh, cat four, cat five riders generally go out so fast. It's crazy. Go watch the cat one riders leave and watch them for the first hour. And you think, what the hell are they doing? Are they riding their bikes? Or they're not going out like Cat 5 and Cat 4 guys and blowing themselves up in the first little bit of time. They know they're in a race and they race accordingly. And I've yeah. seen a big difference in levels of that yeah, it, and mindset. And it depends, it depends on, the, on the situation, sure. like what people are trying to accomplish. Okay. And again, it's that gamble, right. like uh, you know, maybe we let the early breakaway go and we sit up. Right. But is that are we confident that that situation is going to come together? Right. And, you know, you may, uh, what was it, Tour de France with Floyd Landis? Oh, yeah. The group sat up. Yeah. Uh, what they get, a half hour? Right. And Next thing they do. it's out of control. Right. Nobody can control it at that point. Right. And so you, you have to be thinking in advance of what's going on. Uh, but there's plenty of one, two races that start out with attacks from the line right from the get -go. and it just keeps on going and yeah. keeps on going yeah 
and it can end up as a race of attrition or it can end up of a really, really fast race that you know you have to really be concentrated on your position in the pack. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you see gaps open, you need to close gaps fast. Don't think that you're gonna pull it back slowly. Right. If that gap is something you don't want there, yeah. close it immediately. Get it done. Another thing that I learned too is, is that uh, I, when I first started riding, I, wasn't, I didn't feel like I was a very good hill climber. And I've worked on that since and feel like I'm a lot better at it. But what I would do is, if I knew there was a hill coming up, I would work myself up to the front of the pace line as fast as I could or get myself in a position at the front so that when I hit that hill, it didn't matter that I was back four or five guys, that these other guys were climbing faster than I was. Because when I got to the top, I was able to grab back onto them and stay with that group. And so kind of think about those three. If you have weaknesses, yeah. try to think about some of those things. Like when I'm going downhill for some reason, always for me, if you want a lot of speed going downhill, I'm the guy to get behind. I, had, I know how to produce power going downhill. I don't know why. I've never looked at my pedal stroke, but I am fast when it comes to that. Unless it comes to cornering, and I've got some things to learn that way. <laughs> but, but as far as pure power, if we're going downhill and we got a good straightaway, I'm the guy to be behind. And uh, so all my t guys that I was riding with, they knew that, you know, they would just get in there and I, I mean, I felt like a rock star. And so just remember your strengths in your races and, you know, anytime you get a chance to be with guys that know a lot about it and you're out on group rides, it's a great time to pick their brain. Yeah, group ride is, a, is an excellent thing to do. Yeah. Find a group that's consistent. Yeah. Uh, find a group that has experienced riders. Yeah. Don't feel intimidated. Right. And go out there, ride with them, watch what they do, ask yeah. questions because yeah. you know you may get out on group rides where they're not particularly friendly and right. people yell at you for yeah. not pulling through the right way. Right. That's probably not the group ride to be on. Right. Go on a group ride where you've got experienced riders willing to pass on Some, yeah. details yeah. because in the end, you want the group ride to be safe. Yep. If everybody knows what they're doing, right. The group ride's safe. Right. And so you can learn a lot, especially when you're put under pressure yep. by more experienced riders, yep. like the effort's a little bit harder. Yep. And you watch how they move right. and, and how they get through the group of people. Right. And if they race it out here and there, right. watch how they're executing those tactics. Because a lot of group rides, like on the Plan 7 group ride that we run on the weekends, we'll race it out for city signs, we'll right. race it out up a climb, yeah. but we always regroup. Mm -hmm. But that's a great opportunity to see how some of the more experienced riders pull off a tactic yeah. or how somebody who's pretty strong but not so tactically experienced right. gets lit up every time. It's awesome. And, and they may not be paying enough attention to really learn from the experience, but right. you can learn just by observing. Right. Yeah, so that's what I would do. Just go on some group rides, just like uh, Dave just said, and then uh, you know learn how to get in the back of the pace line. And if you're getting spit out the back right when you hit the back of the pace line, learn you know learn what you've got to do to get in there. If yeah, you try learn, different gear. Yeah, try pulling over a little bit quicker. Exactly. Yeah, start thinking through those things because when you're in a race race situation, that's not the time to figure that out. <laughs> it really is not. And uh, also. You know, when you're in that, anyway, we can go on all day. I'm going to kind of end it there a little bit. If you have questions, make sure you make comments below. Uh, if you don't know what an echelon is or you don't know what these terms are, Google them. They're out there. Understand your vocabulary a little bit when you get on these rides. So when somebody, you know, tells you something. Says something. Yeah, yeah says something that you're not totally like, what does he mean, you know, and, and they're frustrated, you're frustrated. That's not, you know, learn a little bit of vocabulary before you get out because I think that's important. And then learn that those guys, they may be gruff with you, some of them, because there are ornery riders, trust you me, they're in the pace line and they're, you know, some people say, well, that guy was really dick. And, and I look at it as they're really not when you know them in person, but they just are so worried about being safe and things out on the road that they get a little uptight. So always get done with your ride before you get all pissed off at somebody and just think about the situation. Really think if the person truly is a dick than he is, but I mean, if, if not, they may just be really trying to look out for you. So I just say that because I've seen it in a lot of guys get mad they don't come back and ride with the group. That's not, don't, don't quit riding with a group just because that happens. They may just be looking out for your best interest, not going about it the right way. So take that for what it's worth. Thank yeah, you so for your inputs. For experienced riders, yeah. be nice on group rides. Yeah. Uh, in the race, all bets are off, yeah. but be friends after the race is right. over. Exactly. It's not personal during the race. 
And for inexperienced riders, ask questions. Right. If you show up on a group ride, don't sit and ride at the back the whole time because exactly. you feel out of place. Mix it, mix in, and yeah. get to know people, yeah. and you may find you may find your training partner for life. Yeah. And be able to really enjoy the social aspect when we're cruising along. Yeah. And then you're gonna learn a ton when we race it out. Yeah, I think it's awesome. All right, so watch the rest of the videos. Once again, questions below, and we'll be talking to you soon. Keep cycling strong.